Hello fellow psychonauts and those of you just curious, this is Interbeing Art and this is the second part of the Salvia Basics series. With these two videos, I want to provide an introduction to the powerful hallucinogen Salvia divinorum. The intent of this video is not necessarily to persuade you to use Salvia divinorum, but rather provide you a better ability to make an informed decision yourself on whether this whopper of an experience is something you'd like to undergo. These videos are for harm reduction because Salvia has the potential to do serious harm if approached without knowledge of the substance and its effects. The harm potential largely derives from the experience itself which can be amazingly intense and profound. By taking the necessary precautions, you can safely bypass and navigate the more negative and uncomfortable effects. Being reckless without proper preparation and carefully selected dose, set, and setting, which I discussed in part one, the intensity of the experience has the potential to be traumatizing. Before I start discussing the benefits and possible reasons why one would want to try Salvia divinorum, I will go through a list of the effects Salvia has on its users. Salvia causes hallucinations, hence being called a hallucinogen, which in short is the perception of external stimuli that has no objective correspondence. The most commonly reported types of salvia hallucinations are visual images, auditory sound, tactile bodily sensations, and kinesthetic, which is body movement. It also causes synesthesia, which is the merging of two or more sensory signals, such as seeing or tasting sound. Salvia has a very unique type of synesthesia called visual tactile synesthesia. This is where you feel everything you see or hallucinate as if it was pressed up against your skin. This can make one claustrophobic. Salvia has the extraordinary power to regularly elicit true hallucinations, meaning they are entirely convincing to the user. An article on theconservation.com by Klaus Steifel analyzes trip reports from Arrowhead by folks who took salvia and compared it to the LSD trip reports. They found that Salvia users were more likely to experience that they were in an environment completely different than the physical space or form they were actually in, aka a true hallucination. Interactions with beings such as uh, aliens, mythical creatures, spirits, etc. And ego dissolution, a variety of experience in which the self ceased to exist in the user's subjective experience. To further gain a sense of what the Salvia experience is, I highly recommend you watch my video on uh, the Z Salvia zipper trip reports. The primary psychoactive chemical of Salvia is Salvinorin Alpha, and all research done up to this point, conducted by Peter Addy at UC Berkeley, says that Salvia is a completely non-addictive, non-toxic, and physiologically safe substance. It's important to know that Salvinorin A is a highly selective kappa opioid agonist, which means it works within a very specific system in our brain that traditional psychedelics such as mushrooms, acid, mescaline, and DMT do not interact with at all. This makes Salvia an atypical psychedelic with sensations and characteristics that are unique to it. The KO system releases dynorphins and is highly correlated with dysphoria. The state of dysphoria includes stress, pain, dissociation from the body, and altered body ownership. Salvia is known to cause all of these dysphoric sensations, sometimes with very high intensity. However, by going slow and gradually easing into the salvia experience, these dysphoric sensations can become pleasant according to California-based salvia therapist Christopher Solomon, uh, who invented the salvia pipe. Christopher Solomon himself actually sent this to me uh, to show you in this video, which is really awesome. So you put a little bit of salvia into each bowl and then allows you to take one hit and then once that's done, just switch it just like that. Um, and that way, that takes a lot less effort than having to repack a bowl. Christopher Solomon himself invented this and uh, yeah, I'll leave some links in the description if you want to get one. 
So why would anyone want to subject themselves to Salvia's influence? I don't know, why do people do anything? I have listed seven categories that I believe Salvia can greatly aid us in as individuals as well as a collective. There are some crossovers between these categories and none are fully isolated from one another. I just organized it this way in order for the information to be more easily digestible. So without further ado, why use Salvia Divinorum? Chunky. The first category I will be addressing is medicinal or therapeutic benefits. This category may be the most important in regard to its legal status. When salvia is criminalized, it is done so with the assumption that it has no medicinal value. Whether this is being purposely ignored or not, the research needs to be analyzed and addressed. Salvia has been documented to have a strong potential for treating severe depression and anxiety. Uh, when microdosing, so just chewing a small amount twice a week. Though this research that was being done in Australia was halted by its criminalization, the data shows a higher and faster success rate than serotonin-based antidepressants such as uh, SSRIs and SNRIs, as well as being less addictive and more safe. For further research, I left links in the description to the research and discussion forums on this topic if this is something you are interested in. Peter Addy has a lecture on Salvia's strong potential for treating addiction. Because where drugs such as cocaine boost dopamine to the point of burning out these reward pathways in our brain, Salvinorin A depletes dopamine which can help counteract the withdrawal and addictive effects. Among many other areas that Salvia has potential to aid are PTSD, autistic-related social impairments, ALS, and terminal depression and anxiety. However, these need to be treated with conjunction of a professional therapist. Otherwise, it could make things worse if you just try to do this on your own. Higher doses of Salvia can provide near-death experiences. Uh, this type of experience has tremendous therapeutic value when combined with a therapist who can help with the integration process. NDEs can act as a rebirth or a mental reset to restart new lifestyles and outlooks on life. Creating a deeper appreciation for all things previously taken for granted, uh, bonding with nature as well as generally heightening one's awareness of their mental state and their surroundings. The second category that Salvia benefits is artistical. Yes, it's a word. Who knew there was a market for Salvia media? The visual hallucinations of Salvia are rich with dynamic juxtapositions, beauty, and patterns that are unique to what any of our sober imaginations could conjure up. The images are intricate with meaning and symbolism, and the dimensional effects really stretch beyond what the cubists and futurists were able to depict. By documenting these visions and using salvia as a muse, you are helping establish psychedelia into society, which allows for collective and individual integration of the validity of these experiences. Also, microdosing can heighten creativity for dancing, singing, art making, and consuming, etc. The third beneficial category is political. Nothing in life is apolitical, and it is worth acknowledging how salvia plays into our politics. Especially in first world countries, psychedelics have a history of being criminalized without proper or valid premises to do so. We have to look critically at the possible reasons why governments would perceive these substances as a threat. Salvia has already been made illegal in many places, but we as psychonauts and defenders of liberty can fight against these harmful laws inherently by demonstrating responsible drug use. These laws are worth fighting against because the entire war on drugs campaign has been proven to have a very damaging effect on society. Insert statistics here. Salvia is a way to reclaim autonomy over your mind and identity from cultural engineers and can potentially be a spiritual alternative to religious dogma. Salvia has the ability to dissolve a person's ego, making Salvia a tool that can be utilized to help combat racism and general bigotries. By forming a strong symbiotic relationship with Salvia Divinorum, it inherently strengthens our connection with nature 
which I believe is imperative in this era of reversing the serious, serious threat of climate change. Category four of salvia benefits is philosophical. What is real? Do humans have free will? Is there life after death? What is the nature of reality? All of these questions most likely can never be definitively answered. However, salvia certainly has something to contribute to these conversations. The salvia experience has massive implications when it comes to the important philosophical problem known as the mind-body problem, which refers to the concern of the relationship between the consciousness in the human mind and the brain as a part of the physical body. In other words, is mind a byproduct created from the processes of matter, like materialists say it is, or is the mind generating the illusion of an external reality as idealists believe? Well, I don't know. But the fact that salvia reliably can turn people into objects and transport a person's awareness to alternate realities that feels just as real if not more real than the reality we are currently experiencing should be brought into account in these debates. Serious implications are also raised regarding theories of self such as the fact that salvia can displace a user's sense of self into other people or life forms, making the user feel like their body is not their own, or expanding their sense of self beyond the limits of their body. Salvia's hallucinations are often beyond weird, and the tendency to search for meaning within these experiences could very well be absurdist. But really, any philosophical system or inquiry will be challenged and expanded by the salvia experience. It can also act as a catalyst to build entirely new philosophies, probably very odd and interesting ones of that. Category 5 is scientific. This is another area that salvia challenges and expands significantly for the same reasons that it challenges the mind-body problem in philosophy. Other than the fact that salvinorin alpha agonizes the KO receptors, we have no solid explanation to how this substance can completely shift our consciousness into unimaginable alternate forms and realities. To my mind, it's either that the brain has the neuronal material to construct these alternate realities, which would mean this reality too is a total construct of our brain, or that quantum teleportation is actually possible, which would mean our body is just a temporary vessel for our immortal soul. Both of these conclusions are most often vehemently denied by the materialistic scientific community, historically for good reason because they had to claw their minds free of societal dogma instilled by religious institutions. But this has resulted in an insufficient amount of serious research into this phenomenon. Because almost all psychedelic substances are illegal alkaloids, salvia being a terpenoid means that it remains legal in many places. Again, because alkaloid-based hallucinogens such as psilocybin, LSD, mescaline, DMT are serotonin agonists that interact with a fairly wide array of systems in the brain, yet does not touch the KO system, means that salvia could provide a great opportunity to look more precisely at the other aspects of how psychedelics can elicit these profound altered states. A piece of the puzzle is the claustrum, which has been dubbed by Francis Crick as the conductor of consciousness, and coincidentally has the highest density of KO receptors in the brain. The insula, which is right next to the claustrum, is thought to be responsible for self-awareness and body ownership, and according to Peter Addy, uh, salvia is suspected to disrupt the insula. A promising yet controversial theory of consciousness is gaining notoriety called the Orchestrated Objective Reduction Theory, aka the orc or theory of consciousness. Developed by famous mathematician and physicist Sir Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hamroff, the orc or theory of mind in short postulates that consciousness originates at the quantum level inside the neurons, specifically in the microtubules, and therefore is able to utilize quantum mechanics such as quantum leaping, quantum entanglement, backward flowing time, superpositions, and possibly even the holographic principle. All of which would be convenient assets 
to explain the breakthrough psychedelic experience. Any way you slice it, I believe true analysis of the salvia experience will be revolutionary to science. Category six may come as a surprise to some, and it is mathematical benefits. From what I've found, salvia is the best evidence we have that these dimensions that theoretically work well on paper are not only real, but are able to be experienced by almost anyone. Our eyes and sober minds are only equipped to process three dimensions, but salvia is commonly reported to flatten three-dimensional experience into 2D, a process I call dimensional compression, which allows users to see their entire lifetime and sometimes even alternate lifetimes from an outside perspective. This is truly mind-boggling and humbling, this would confirm the fourth dimension relates to time and the fifth to probability. Please refer to my video entitled Salvia Archetypes the Wheel for more info on this. Even if it was confirmed to be merely a product of distorting our brain's processing, it is at the very least a way to learn and see these dimensions with new perspectives. Last but certainly not least on my list of beneficial categories is spirituality. Spirituality seems to me to be among the most elusive facets of the human experience. There are many ways to approach the concept of spirituality. In my opinion, the best way to approach it is by embracing it as a mystery and not as a dogma. You could do psychedelics without being spiritual. The best evidence for spirits I have ever encountered is the archetypes and the breakthrough psychedelic experience. And Salvia can easily and reliably provide this. These beings are 100% convincingly autonomous, and they appear in many people's trips all over the world, regardless of prior knowledge of their existence. Hence the traditional Maztec name, Ska Pastora. The shepherdess is commonly seen and heard with consistent personality traits, like being shy and imperious. Again, despite the users who encountered her not having awareness of this archetype prior to the trip. There really isn't any scientific explanation for this phenomena. A common explanation I am told is that our brains are simply structured similarly, which can explain why we experience things like synesthesia and ego loss, but it does not explain how these very specific archetypes are experienced by many, many users. So Salvia can then be a tool to investigate, document, and commune with these spirits. And unlike religion, Salvia provides direct experience and not just a story with some morals tacked onto it. Salvia has informed and expanded my conception of reincarnation. Most people speak of reincarnation as your soul living in many lifetimes, but within the confines of humans or animals and still within linear time. However, Salvia has shown it is possible that we exist in many different forms, living and non-living, and in many different parallel universes. It can also give us insights into the nature of our souls. All of this in order to bring us insights into the mystery of spirit and the human experience. Dogma is a reduction of the mystery, specifically designed to delude us into supporting their unjust religious institutions. Salvia helps us think for ourselves, embrace the mystery behind the mask, and stay forever curious. So there I listed just some of the applications and benefits of using Salvia Divinorum. I know this video is more opinionated than the first of this series. Ultimately, I have found that the number one catalyst for most people to try Salvia is curiosity, which is a perfectly acceptable and valid reason. You may have noticed that a few of the items I discussed are transferable to other psychedelics. However, because of its gray zone legal status, it ought to be specially considered in order to gain a foothold on the legitimacy of the psychedelic experience within our culture. The power of the psychedelic experience should never be underestimated. Speaking of it in a format like I am right now tends to flatten the impact. I could go on and on about how astonishing and incredible the experience is, but ultimately these are just words, the noises I'm making with my mouth. Only through direct experience can you really understand why I put so much time and energy into these videos. This is not just another drug to get high off of. This is a gateway to a truly ineffable encounter, yet it is still but a glimpse of the breadth and depth of our consciousness. The Salvi experience has been for me and many, many others to be among the most profound life experiences ever encountered. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. Please do comment any reason you use Salvia that I may have missed. And also, I really love reading your trip reports. To help out my channel, it really helps to give this video a big old thumbs up. Subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for upcoming content. Please consider donating to my PayPal or becoming a patron, which will allow me to continue creating this content and spreading the psychedelic message. I put a lot of hours of work into this channel, so it really means the world to me. Humongous thank you to my patrons Nova Kane, Martin Richards, and extra special thanks to Rainbow Droid. I couldn't do this without you. Stay safe, my fellow psychonauts. I'll see you on the other side when we're interconnected on the fabric of beings in the salvia space. Beep, 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 beep.